Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by Eric Excel. I'm Rick Kessler. With me, as always, Sherman Goldenberg. And joining the two of us today, Josh Miller, VP of Sales from Keystone RV, and Christy Spencer, Director of Marketing and Communications at Keystone RV. Thank you both for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Well, hey, we're talking to you uh, right at the end of August. So September, very busy month, is, is right around the corner, at the end of this week. Uh, Hershey Show, the open house after that. Plus, you guys have packed in some owners rallies. And, you know, why not? Let's just see how many hours in a day we can fill, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what's uh, on the heels or on the, on the eve of this important month, what are some things that are going on over at Keystone product wise? Uh, man, we've got a, we've got a ton going on. We feel like this has been a real, uh, um, transformational year for our company. Cause we're, you know, the market's obviously shifted. Um, there's a changing dynamic, not only in, in customer needs, but then, you know, we continue to see that trend of, of new customers entering the market and their needs are a little bit different. So we've been trying to, to race really hard and, and pivot. And, you know, we always want to try to meet the needs of, of every single one of these campers that are going to be looking for a towable RV. So we feel like we're doing that in a big way this year, identifying new new price points, identifying new segments, um, kind of changing up the way that we're building some of our tried and true um, brands. So a lot of cool and exciting stuff that we'll be debuting, um, most of it at Hershey and then the rest of it a little bit later at our open house. Josh, uh, uh, in, the, in the notes beforehand from Christy, um, in now in your preliminary comments, we're talking about a shift uh, in the market. Yep. Could you uh, hone in on that a bit? Yeah, I I think really simply, I'd put that into kind of two categories, Sherm. Um, you know, one over the the years of COVID, um, our industry was was affected just like all other industries with with pricing. You know, I mean, the price of raw materials, the price of labor, a lot of things drove cost of RVs up. Um, and then as you transition out of kind of that COVID um, space with with interest rates and and um, all the things that go along with that, I think there was a tremendous need for for OEMs to take a look at the value they provide and the price points we're hitting with some of those units. Um, so that's one of the things that, that we've addressed in a big way across all of our brands. The second thing is, is just that continuing trend of um, new campers entering the market and their needs are different. And most of that I'm, I'm diagnosing is, is weight and size of the, of the towable RVs. So we've addressed those, both of those things, whether it's the value and price point of it or the size of units that, that we're putting out to, to these customers, we've, we've addressed both of those in big ways this fall. Size, you're talking size, you're talking weight. Um, yep. What direction are we going? I think I know the answer, but. <laughs> we're going smaller. You know, I think that uh, I was just looking at it this morning as we were prepping for this call. We have never had as many fifth wheels in our company under 8,000 pounds and under 1,500 pound hitch weight that we're going to be building this fall. Uh, trailer, -wise, trailer wise, we're going, um, we are really honing in on smaller floor plans in our stick and tin and our lightweight laminate um, brands. But more importantly, I mean, all of the, the models that we're going to have that are right around that 3,000 to 3,500 3, pound dry weight. Um, we feel like it's opening up to a whole new new segment of tow vehicles for customers. And, and those seem to be the customers that are entering the market um, um, most in this time. Josh, maybe uh, perhaps the, the, at least publicly, but the best example of that might be the Cougar Sport. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, the Cougar Sport kind of combines both of those things that I'm talking about. You know, I mean, we felt like there was a need to address some some price points um, on the fifth wheel side. Um, we also saw more and more customers wanting to tow a smaller fifth wheel. So, you know, the Cougar Sport did both of those things. You know, we re, we uh, rethought the smaller fifth wheel from the ground up. I mean, we we uh, we partnered with vendors to take a look at the parts and pieces that, that we're using so that we can keep the value to the customers high so that their camping experience is an easy one. Um, but also address some some price concerns. We looked at engineering. So the way that we engineered the size of those and the way that we're putting them together um, to get to get um, cost out and get weight out, um, the way that we're manufacturing them, um, you know, to create efficiencies to help drive value in the in the product. 
Um, so we've, I mean, we've, we've rethought fifth wheels from the ground up with those Cougar sports and it's been an unbelievable success so far. And, you know, our dealers and the customers have spoken and we're going to continue to expand that lineup and we're going to have more floor plans, um, and more, uh, segments touched by that Cougar sport as the, as the year goes on. So, yeah, there's no doubt the, the Cougar sport certainly hit a sweet spot for a lot of people. Um, and that's is being uh, more or less parlayed across the rest of the lineup. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think we uncovered a um, opportunity for buyers to give buyers a reason to return to the market and give new buyers an opportunity for a swing at some more affordable products that that maybe is an easier bite their first time around. So, so this fall we'll be introducing what we're calling the Keystone Classics Collection, which is which the tagline for that is our being with re, within reach. So our being within reach of the Keystone Classics Collection, and that is a series of models designed um, to be a little bit more accessible both in weight and price. Um, that will be across our Springdale Hideout Bullet Passport. Uh, Arcadia, Cougar, Impact, and Carbon product. Good job. Yep. <laughs> so that that just ties right into um, the, that big trend that you're, you've already talked about and, and lighter, smaller, nimble. Um, that's the new buyer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Cougar Sport was really prescient, right? Cougar, Cougar went out on a limb with the introduction of those small fifth wheels. And I think they uncovered a sweet spot before... Um, before most of the market recognized it. And like Josh said, it's been a massive success for that brand. So we'll see those new um, similar introductions through um, our other mid-profile brand, Arcadia. They have a new product line called Select that will be very similar with, with smaller fifth wheel options. And okay. then it trickles on down through, um, through our uh, laminated lightweights and our uh, stick and tin hideout. But and and much of this, Christy, is going to be uh, evident uh, at uh, at Hershey and at the open house. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think if you if you stop by Hershey, you'll see um, at least two new floor plans from both Bullet and um, and Passport, both single axle. That's right, Josh. Yep. Two new single axle floor plans. I think it's been a long time since Passport's introduced a single axle in their lineup. Um, and then for uh, Springdale and Hideout, you'll see both single axle, great price points, low tow weights, and some new double axle non-slides at um, really attractive pricing and, and contented and built in a way that um, opening price point customers um, can take a swing at them. Very good. Is it, are these, so what we're looking at here are, are, are like, like the sport, Cougar Sport, but sub brands within existing lines? Um, yeah, kind of additions to those lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to like Christy was mentioning with our, with our Springdale and hideout offerings, you know, they're going to, it's going to run the gamut from, um, the smaller single axle, um, units all the way up into our double axle offering, which, okay. you know, some of those models are going to be in that 33, 34 foot, um, range. So, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's a, it's an addition on the bottom side size wise of any of those, okay. those brands it's going to run the gamut on on some of that stuff okay josh before we got uh you know, before we went live here uh you alluded to the fact that uh, aside from the shows that you're preparing for uh that there's uh oh, you guys are uh you know uh working with owners rallies uh right now yeah yeah christy christy can probably correct me on some of the dates but here just in the last 30 days we've had a We've had a Keystone wide owners rally um, that we've held. Um, we had one a little bit earlier um, um, in the summer, which was a, a fusion and toy hauler based um, owners rally. And then we've got our uh, Montana owners rally that's coming up in two weeks. Um, we're in the final throes of, of um, getting everything orchestrated for that. So yeah, it seems that this season has kind of evolved away from <laughs> you know the, the busy time of just open house and model change but it's evolved into owner's rallies, which for us is, for us, us is really key. You know, I mean, we've, we've really taken a lot of pride over the years and making sure that we have our, our ear to the ground with our customers and making sure that we're driving product based on what customers are out there experiencing with the, with our campers. So um, these owners are just an extension of our product development in one way. So we love it. We love hosting them. We love having them here and their feedback is it's invaluable. One of the, um, 
One of the other trends I know you wanted to talk about, you know, in addition to the the lighter, the shorter, the smaller, is um, functional design. Let's call it or, or um, universal util, utilitarian. How's that? Um, yep. <laughs> and, and is that Chrissy? Is that something that uh, the owners are giving you some pretty good feedback on? Yeah, I, I think people are looking for ways to use their their RVs more and more often in different ways than um, they probably were three or four or five years ago. So when I walked out and I sent you that note over the weekend, one of the things that I noticed and is that nearly every brand on campus is building in really flexible furniture, flexible floor plans. I'll give you a couple of examples. Cougar um, has a number of units that have have a dinette space that's convertible. And you saw that in the 30 BHS travel trailer right. last year. Um, but they've kind of taken the, the idea of a, a dinette space that could either be a workspace or a dinette or not at all, something that stows away completely to the next level to make the, the trailers that they're designing seem really open when that when that dinette table is stowed away, or you know it, it can be adapted for whether you're using it for work or for dining. I think we, um, Sprinter and Bullet in particular, have built some new um, bunkhouse floor plans where the bunkhouse converts quickly to a bonus room, you know, a place where kids can game and play and study or, you know, homeschool or whatever. So we're seeing that a lot. But probably the most exciting thing um, that we're launching this year is a, a new series of wide open toy haulers, um, which gets rid of that garage barrier. Have you seen these yet? No. They're amazing. So it gets rid of the garage barrier, barrier and extends tie downs all the way through the body of the coach. So rather than being limited to a one UTV or a couple of, of um, dirt bikes, you can put you can tie equipment, whether it's kayaks or or you know bikes or it's you know multiple dirt bikes or UTVs. Josh can talk to it a little bit more, but um, we're seeing them in both fusion and and carbon in their impact in. Um, I'm sorry, Fusion and Raptor in their impact and carbon sub brands. Yeah. And we're manufacturing it with, with our traditional laminated walls for those brands, but we've also added a new aluminum sidewall um, version of those those floor plans in both for both brands. So let's let's pull back a bit as as we wind this down. Um, we mentioned Hershey and Open House several times now. What's what's your sense? What's your expectations? Especially open house. Um, it's it's a funny year. I mean, it's no no doubt about it. Uh, I guess you know just that. What what are your uh, what are your thoughts heading into those two events? Um, I think we're we're really excited. Um, you know, I think we've got for our company we've got a couple things that that we're really really excited about. One is the, all the new things that we're talking about. We've got, you know, in a, in a time of year where, where there's been a lot of pivoting and changing in, in the way that we're, um, we're building product and meeting the demands of our, our dealers in the, in the market, um, it probably would have been a time for us to take our foot off the gas on development. We didn't do that at all. So we're going to have almost in every single brand, we're going to have pretty substantial enhancements and additions to the lineups across the board. So that's exciting. And I think our dealers in a lot of ways drove that innovation. So we think the response is going to be off the charts. Um, the other thing is, is that we've worked really hard with our dealers over the last, you know, four to six months to help drive out some of the older product that was on the lots. So our field inventory is, is really low with our dealers. We're in a really healthy position across the board with our dealers. So we think that, look, none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know what 2024 is going to bring. But whatever it does bring, we feel like we're leaning into it with our dealer feedback and, and the stuff that we're producing based on that. Um, and we really think that we could be setting ourselves up for a really fantastic show season. Because look, at the at the core of it, there's a ton of people that spend their weekends um, and their their family time camping. And and that's not going to change. Um, you know, our, our industry is really, really healthy from that standpoint. So there's good things ahead. And we think we're doing all the right things to, to support the market in that. You're, 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 you're good, Josh, uh, <laughs> presenting uh, Keystone's case. Uh, you ever consider a TV career? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I think uh, I think the, the face for radio kind of comes into play, Sherman. Um, oh. um, I, I think I'll just stick behind the scenes if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I want to thank both of you for joining us. I want to thank Eric Sell for being our longtime sponsor. 
And uh, hey, we'll see you at Hershey, if not before. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Thank you. Thank you.